Today, we're taking a deep dive look into the B-Link SEI 14 mini PC, which was graciously sent over by B-Link for review. And of course, I don't review these mini PCs as desktop PCs as they were intended. Instead, we will see how it stacks up as a home lab server, running hypervisors like VMware ESXi and Proxmox VE server. This tiny little mini PC packs some serious hardware, great compatibility, cool aesthetics, and many other features. So let's dive in and see all that this mini PC has to offer. Also, before we dive in, I wanted to let you know that I will be announcing the winner of the Minis Forum MS A1 PC at the end of this video. Very exciting. So definitely you'll want to stick around for that. The B-Link SEI 14 mini PC comes with some really impressive specs. It's powered by a 12th gen Intel Core Ultra 5 125H processor. It's a mouthful that has 14 cores and 18 threads. And honestly, this is the first of the core ultra processors that I have had my hands on as a home lab server. Alongside that, we also have the Intel Arc graphics configuration in this mini PC, support for 96 gigs of DDR5 memory, dual M.2 slots with a max of eight terabytes of NVMe storage with four terabytes per M.2 slot. And for connectivity, there's a 2.5 gig Intel network adapter. Thank you, B-Link, for the Intel. USB-C connectivity, Thunderbolt 4, USB-A 3.2 ports at 10 gig, display port, HDMI port, and more. Now getting into how this unit came, it was packed nicely from B-Link and the build quality feels very solid. It reminds me in the look and feel of a Mac Mini and we know Apple does really well with packaging and configuring their hardware to be sleek, sound, and aesthetically pleasing. On the back side of the unit, we've got a range of ports, including a USB-C port, USB-A, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, DisplayPort, and HDMI port. The front has more USB ports and an audio jack aside from the power button. Now, looking at the internals on this unit is fairly easy, although it would be great to see more units like the B-Link mini PCs that have a more toolless design. After removing the rubber stoppers that cover the screws on the bottom, we can remove the screws and the bottom plate. Now, interestingly, B-Link has added a mesh screen on the inside to help protect the components from dust buildup. Although you'll need to clean the screen regularly to maintain proper airflow, you'll see the two M.2 slots and RAM slots that are accessible once you remove the bottom plate, this dust filter screen, and you should be able to have full access at that point. The M.2 slots have a single heatsink that covers both drives, which I think is a really nice touch to make sure that both of the drives stay cool under load and with the single heat sink that fits as one adapter on both drives, you're gonna be able to cover both of those at the same time. Now onto the fun part, loading up my favorite hypervisors. VMware ESXi and Proxmox both ran smoothly on the SEI 14 thanks to the Intel two and a half gig network adapter. And this is a huge plus with this unit because many of the mini PCs are using Realtek NICs and you're often limited to only running Proxmox on those mini PCs. But with an Intel network adapter, you've got options to run both VMware ESXi and Proxmox. Now, I know many might say that only being able to run Proxmox is all they're looking for, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, when I personally look at a mini PC to recommend to readers and watchers of the channel, to me, the value that they bring to the table, if a mini PC can run more hypervisors than another mini PC for the same price, to me, that is a better value as it's going to give you options. And while you may think you won't run something right now, in addition to Proxmox, that may change in the future. You might want to try out different hypervisors or experiment more with what VMware ESXi has to offer, like with the NVMe memory tiering or other hypervisors out there. Now, the Intel Core Ultra 5 processor is still a hybrid processor, meaning that it has the performance cores and the efficiency cores. 
To get VMware ESXi running on the SEI 14, remember you're going to have to add that special boot parameter that basically suppresses the check for the dissimilar CPU cores. And then you can make this setting persistent after you get VMware ESXi loaded and running. And there's a special ESX CLI command as shown here. Proxmox, of course, didn't require anything to get up and running using the non-uniform CPUs and there were no issues installing it and running virtual machines. And I think that is a great testament to really how far along Proxmox has come and what a mature hypervisor it really is and why so many are using it in the home lab. I've even started to use this mini PC with Proxmox to test out Veeam Backup and Replication's new Proxmox Backup feature that dropped just a few days ago with Veeam Backup and Replication 12.2. I wanted to show you guys in the web UI of Proxmox loaded on this B-Link SEI 14. As you can see, I only have just a couple of normal VMs running and I'll explain what I have going on here. This was the first virtual machine that I installed just for testing on the SEI 14. It's just an Ubuntu 2204 LTS server, installed updates, those kinds of things. This virtual machine, the one that's uh, noted as PVE test worker, is actually a worker VM from Veeam Backup and Replication 12.2. The new functionality there that I've been playing around with, being able to back up Proxmox VE server virtual machines uh, so that's new functionality as of Veeam 12.2 and this virtual machine was a simple recovery of a backup that I took of VM 100 using Veeam's backup and replication capabilities in 12.2 but I wanted to show you guys uh, as well how things look and are recognized inside of Proxmox as you can see we've got 18 times Intel Core Ultra 5 125H a CPU and interestingly and I'm going to show you guys the difference here. Interestingly, Proxmox identifies this correctly at one socket. As far as I am aware, the architecture is a single socket with the hybrid CPU configurations. As I will show you guys with VMware ESXi, when I pop in another NVMe drive boot ESXi, this will be noted as two sockets in VMware ESXi. I'm not sure what the difference is there with the recognition of the CPU cores and socket architecture in VMware ESXi, but there is something interesting there going on with that Core Ultra CPU. And I've not seen that with any other hybrid CPU architecture that I have tested with in the home lab with VMware ESXi. Now on to VMware vSphere. I want to show you guys the interesting look at this Core Ultra 5 125H processor and how it is detected in VMware ESXi. If I expand the CPU configuration, you can see the logical processors are 14, but here is the interesting part. VMware ESXi shows the sockets to be two physical sockets with seven cores per socket. Now that's interesting as Proxmox doesn't detect it that same way and for that matter Proxmox detects it accurately with those 18 logical threads and we see in VMware vSphere we've got the 14 cores with two sockets and seven cores per socket. And I'm going to show the screenshot of this in the next section of this video. But another interesting thing is with VMware ESXi, I'm seeing double the power consumption at idle that I am seeing in Proxmox. Instead of 15 watts with Proxmox sitting idling, I'm seeing 33 to 34 watts with VMware ESXi. Extremely interesting. I've never seen this disparity with power consumption and the way that these hybrid processes are detected between Proxmox and VMware ESXi. However, again, this is the first Core Ultra CPU that I have tested in a mini PC. So I wanted to show you guys this interesting difference between the hypervisors as well as that power consumption anomaly with VMware ESXi. Now also on power consumption, I ran some power consumption tests and I found something extremely interesting. With VMware ESXi, the power consumption of the B-Link SEI 14 is double what I see with Proxmox at between 33 and 34 watts of power draw. Contrast that with Proxmox idle power consumption and I'm seeing around 14 to 15 watts power draw. Now Proxmox has half the power draw at idle. 
Now this is a pretty significant finding as most home labs will be idling more than they will be running at full load. So running Proxmox on this hardware is going to save you money over time. Very interesting. However, I was really pleasantly surprised under full load that this CPU peaked at around 75 watts, which is pretty efficient for a system of this processing capability. Compare that with the Minis Forum MS-01 with the Core i9-13900H processor that can burst up to 120 watts at 100% CPU utilization. So what's the verdict? The B-Link SEI 14 has a lot going for it. You get a modern CPU with 18 threads of processing power. You've got 96 gigs of DDR5 memory. You've got dual NVMe slots, Intel Arc graphics, and great networking options. And if you want to just simply run Windows 11, it comes with Windows 11 Pro loaded on the default NVMe drive. Now there are a couple of downsides. At $799, that's a bit expensive compared with something like the MS-01 that I think has better networking. Also, I would have loved to have seen dual two and a half gig network adapters. And I think the power consumption could have been a little bit lower for a mini PC of this processing range in an idle state, because really a home lab is gonna be idling more than it's gonna be at 100% load. Overall, I'm really impressed with a B-Link SEI 14. It's a powerful, efficient machine that offers plenty of versatility for running hypervisors like VMware ESXi and Proxmox. And if you're looking for a small form factor home lab server, this mini PC is definitely worth considering. Okay, as promised, we are going to pick the winner of the Minis Forum MSA1. So we're pasting in the YouTube video link making just a couple of modifications here. And we're going to pick that random winner. Okay, the comments are loaded. Let's pick a winner. Jeremy Hancock has won the Minis Forum MSA1. Congratulations, Jeremy. Jeremy, I'm gonna have you reach out to me on Discord and I'm gonna have that link on the video description. So join the server and reach out to me for us to sync up. Well, if you found this review helpful, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more home lab content, technical how-tos, and just cool stuff. Be sure to check out the virtualization how-to written block as well as my other written project, Tech to Cloud, as I'm posting a lot of really cool things out there. And in fact, a lot of the blog posts that I post at Virtualization How To, Tech to Cloud, and other written resources are the source of a lot of the videos that you see on YouTube. So be sure to check out those written resources that I maintain each and every day. Well, thanks for watching. Do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you guys in the next one.